Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I want to start first saying that I was really surprised receiving a small donation from one of my subscribers. Thank you so much, Ioannis. I really appreciate your generosity. Definitely I'm gonna use these funds in order to get things to create some more content for my YouTube channel. And now let's go to the subject of this video. I'm standby with the projects like Vacuum 2 preamplifier or the Maran's amplifier because I didn't receive yet the parts in order to continue that project. So I decided to make a new video series, tutorial for beginners with the microcontrollers and how to interact with the sensors, modules, displays and so on. So if you are a beginner with the microcontrollers and if you are new to my channel, Please subscribe, activate the notification bell, like that you will not miss any of this video series. So without further ado, let's jump to my working bench, have a closer look to the microcontrollers, sensors, modules, display and talk a bit about them. Here we go with some microcontrollers. So we have Arduino family. They are really popular and a lot of people they like to play with them. We have the STM32. They are really powerful, more powerful than Arduino. Then we have the ESPs. They have capability to connect to modems via Wi-Fi through the router and do like Internet of Things. As you can see here I have more of the Arduinos. So I have Pro Micro, Nano, Uno, Mega and Due. Mega, Uno, Nano and Pro Micro they are operating in 5 volts. Arduino Due operate only in 3.3 volts. We have the STMs operating same on 3.3 volts and we have the ESPs that operating same in 3.3 volts. Then we have AVR architecture microcontrollers if are the Pro Micro, Arduino Nano, Uno and Mega. Arduino Due is IRM architecture microcontroller same as STMs and the ESPs. Arduino Pro Micro, Arduino Nano, Uno and Mega they are 8-bit microcontrollers. Arduino Due is a 32-bit microcontroller. Then we have the STM32 which are the same 32-bit microcontrollers and we have the ESPs that are the same 32-bit microcontrollers. These STM32 are well known as the black pill and the blue pill. They are really powerful and very small package that you can use very easy in some various projects. ESPs also they have more packages like this very small one, tiny one that has just few IO pins that can be controlled via internet if you are doing IOTs or just standalone without internet. And, but this one is very easy to interact with Arduino Uno in order to have more IO pins to control and in order to connect your Arduino Arduino Uno via internet, via your modem to internet and maybe also do some application to the Blink uh, application that is very easy to interact with Arduino. We're gonna go to these uh, steps once we're gonna go with the, with the next videos on this series. Then you can see then there is the Wemos D1 Mini which has more IO pins than the small brother, let's see. And then it's capable to do standalone things like control motors, reading sensors, connect with displays and uh, more bunch of things. Then there is the biggest brother, same running with ESP8266, is the Node MCU that has more IO pins than the Wemos D1 Mini, then the big brother and the more powerful one, the ESP32, and we can see I have two different packages. This one has some extra pins than uh, this one, but both of them they are doing the same things. They have also the Bluetooth BLA built-in capability to connect to, to internet via Wi-Fi to your modem. So we're gonna talk individually about each of these microcontrollers step by step on the next videos when we're gonna start doing some uh, small project and uh, teach you guys how to interact with some sensors with some displays and do a bunch of stuff with those microcontrollers so now let's see which sensor and which modules we can interact with these microcontrollers here we go with some of the sensors, modules, displays that can very easy be used with any of those microcontrollers. But bear in mind that some of them they are operating in 5 volts and when you interact with those microcontrollers that operate in 3.3 volts, you always need to have a voltage regulator in, vo in order to supply separate voltage to the display. Let's see the display operating in 5 volts and separate voltage at 3.3 volts just to the microcontroller in order to make your project. So we have some modules like this one for example is an Ethernet port for an Arduino. It's very easy to, to make your Arduino as an Internet of Things with this module. It's very friendly. It just sit on the top of Arduino. How you can see very friendly with the Arduino and it's just a module perfect designed to do your projects with 
Arduino. So you connect through the internet port to your router, to your modem, and you have internet. You can do a, a internet of things. Also, you can read a SD card over here and you can write things on the top. Then we have this module that is also very easy. Just plug and play. So we have our Arduino and you put on the top of it. So by doing that now, you can create a very easy CNC machine for axis. There is connection for uh, end stop sensors, for your uh, stepper motors over there. And there is very easy open source uh, code for a CNC machine that can be operated with exactly this module. Then we have also this module that is same, a CNC machine that can be operated just by an Arduino Nano. And it's very easy and friendly, same. You have end stops, three axis uh, stepper motors over here. Then we have this module, which is the 16 by 2 display with some pushy buttons that you can create a menu. And it's, this one is very also friendly with Arduino because it's properly made it as a module. Just sit on the top of your Arduino like that and you create a thermostat so you connect your temperature so sensor over here you can create a menu at what time to start a fan or heating on and heating to stop depend of the temperature that you set up so we're gonna see these things on the next episode of this video series that we are going through guys then we have this uh, touch screen tft display that is also this one friendly with arduino and you can see it's already put it on the top of a mega because usually it's better to use the mega it's more powerful a bit by the Arduino Uno and then once you plug it in it allows you to have some IO pins in order that you can do something here and control anything through these IO pins. Then we have just a TFT display is not a touch just a TFT you can just do another menu with buttons to display on this stuff. Then we have the Nexion display which I really like to work with this one in a lot of projects because has built on his microcontroller here that uh, controls the, only the graphic and it's easy by the touch display to send the comments via OART to your Arduino and say to the Arduino what do you want to do from this button. So yeah, we're gonna see in the next videos on this uh, series also how to interact with Nexion and how to make a nice graphic and how to control Arduino through a Nexion display. I have this one 20 by 4 LCD display if it was the Big Brother or 16 by 2. This one was a project when I was trying to build my CNC machine and this one was created just to make a constant RPM for my motor 24 volt motor that I was using also this MOSFET in order to control 24 volts via PWM signal in order to control the speed of the motor and so on then I like a lot also to experiment with OLED displays they are very easy and very fast to adjust with any of the microcontrollers they are operating even 5 volts or 3.3 volts and are very friendly just I2C square communication with your microcontroller then we have also a Nokia display Display that also this one is friendly with Arduino. You have this simple display, seven segment displays that also this one it's really nice when you want to do small projects. And we have LED matrix display that you also with this one you can create some small projects. We have the matrix pushy button as well also. Then we have transceivers, the NRF 24L01 that also this one very nice and good projects you can do with Arduino like remote controls and more stuff. There is another NRF in the small package with the antenna built in on the, on the PCB. We have the RFID cards that also this one is good for a lot of projects. Reading a simple potentiometer with the Arduino. Controlling relays with the Arduino as well. We have the gyro. I have three. This one is just two axes and this one is a three axis. Then we can control with Arduino also a laser and a laser reader over here. EIR sensors, touch buttons, Bluetooth modules, digital potentiometers that you can also interact with Arduino stepper motors, servos for those that they like to create some robots, ultrasonic sensor and also a remote control with the IR sensor for the remote control. Okay guys, let me know in the comment below which microcontroller and which kind of project do you want me to start the second episode of this video series. So I can see guys, I have uh, lots of sensors, microcontrollers, uh, modules, uh, displays. So get ready with some breadboards and some jumper wires for the next episode. When we're gonna start learning and how to make a code, how to program the microcontroller and how to have fun doing some nice projects. If you enjoy watching this video, please put a like, share the video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell to don't miss the next episode of this series.
And make sure you will not miss any episode of this video series because everything what I'm going to teach you in one day you're gonna be able to do a very nice big project like the one in this video. So bye bye now guys and see you with the next video.